State of Affairs is pleased to uh, welcome John Jacoby, Pre Professor of Health Law and Policy at Seton Hall Law School. Good to see you, John. Good to see you. Thank you. One of the areas you focus on is uh, the question of parity when it comes to health care payment. What does mm -hmm. that mean? The, the parity movement has been around for 20 or 25 is it a years. Uh, the, the first big federal bill was passed in 1996. Uh, the idea behind mental health parity is that coverage for mental health services should be on parity, should be the same essentially as, as coverage for physical health services. By the way, before you go any further, I, wanna, I should clarify this. this is part of our ongoing series on the future of health care and the question of parity in terms of what's paid for and what's not is a huge part of the future, right? It is. It is. Uh, for, for a couple of reasons. Go ahead. One, one, because uh, there, there has been problems in New Jersey and elsewhere. Uh, of people with mental health issues getting access to appropriate care. And the second thing is that as we move to an integrated health care delivery system where physical health and, and mental health uh, occur in the same place, we don't want there to be confusion over what's paid for and what's not. So hold on one second. Are we saying that, that if you seek and receive mental health services, that insurance companies and others, the government as well, don't look at it the same as if you have a broken arm? Uh, sometimes yes, sometimes no. There's low-hanging fruit that's been picked off. So insurance companies have worked pretty hard in response to federal legislation and state legislation to uh, be on the right side of the law here. Uh, and what they've done well, I think, more or less, is to make sure that there aren't payment limits, uh, that is... Uh, like a cap? A cap, a cap on the number of visits or on lifetime, uh, lifetime expenditures for mental health services. Insurance companies have done quite a good job with that. Here's the problem that, that arises still, and that's conceptually quite a difficult problem. And, and that is uh, that uh, at, at times insurance companies will deny coverage because they will assert the coverage is not medically necessary. Um, and, and insurance companies can do that. They can, they can review a doctor's order and determine whether it's medically necessary or not. Mental health parity requires that the process that insurance, insurance companies go through be identical or on parity for physical health and, not, and, and mental health services. Sometimes it's not. I'm curious about this. We talked before we got on the air about Medicaid. What does the question of Medicaid and the payments as it relates to Medicaid have to do with the future of health care? Uh, Medicaid is an incredibly important payment system. I, I would argue that Medicaid is a, one of the most important government. What Medicaid agencies. is versus Medicare. Medicaid is a, is a program for low-income and disabled people, um, and Medicare is a social insurance program for retirees and some long-term disabled people. So Medicaid covers a very large number of births in, in New Jersey, a very large uh, percentage of the nursing home days in New Jersey. It covers people with very serious, complex medical conditions who have low socioeconomic status. Very hard group of people to, to, to treat, a very hard group of people to help with their health status. Medicaid needs to change uh, from an insurance program that just pays for services when someone goes to the doctor and gets services to one that helps to organize uh, health care services. What does it mean, organize health care services? Think and by the way, the government's supposed to do this? Well, the government should facilitate it. The government, uh, the, the government uh, created Medicare. Medicare pays for services. The question is, how will that payment system provide incentives for health care providers to look beyond the narrow medical condition that someone presents mm. with and instead look at that person's entire context so that if someone comes in with diabetes or uh, COPD, the, the uh, health care provider will have an incentive in a reformed Medicaid system to look at that person's entire context. As opposed context. to it being fragmented, if you will? Yeah. The fragmented nature of the way patients who fall under this Medicaid category are treated medically is not healthy, is it? It's not healthy. It's not, and it's not just Medicaid, but Medicaid is probably the most important program for which we should uh, look to uh, fragmentation and fix it. Quick question on this on legislation. I don't want, uh, if you want to check it out, it happens to be Assembly Bill 2031. Um, that has worked through some of the steps that the state needs to be involved in in terms of all insurance companies and consumers so they better understand what they can get and not get as having to do with access. I know it sounds jargony in the weeds. Why does this matter? It, it matters because we, we don't want uh, people to think they have insurance and then find out when they uh, get care the and get home. 
Uh, well, sometimes it's not even in the small print, but but uh, but yeah, it's, it's it is. So what's this legislation do? It, it helps people get access uh, to coverage, uh, so that when they get health care services, they know whether their coverage will provide uh, will will provide all the care that they need, and not be surprised when they get home and not have not have coverage. John Jacoby is a professor of health law and policy at Seton Hall Law School. I want to thank you for joining us. Very important conversation. Thank you, John. Thank you. Stay right there. We'll be right back. I'm Steve Adubato, right after this. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Agnes Veris NJTV studio at 2 Gateway. Funding has been provided by Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, United Airlines. Atlantic Health System, New Jersey Resources, Choose New Jersey, the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, and by the Northward Center.